Praise the Lord, saints. God bless you. It is a great day for us to be here, and I just want to welcome you to Julie Blair Ministries, to our channel, to Jesus Christ and all the things that is happening, and it's just such an exciting time, and I am so excited about today's message. So please help us destroy the works of the enemy in this hour by making certain that you receive these messages and that you partner with us and that you please like, share, comment, because you know what? There's a war against this word going out. However, we will prevail, prevail against the works of the enemy in all hours. Amen. So let's go ahead and start off in prayer. Father, today in the precious and mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, I thank you for this word. May it fill us all as we go forth to receive. I thank you, Father, that there are no freak accidents, that there is no retaliation, no monitoring spirits, no tormenting or harassing spirits that will enter into anything of this message today. I thank you, Father, that we will all be receiving from you, and I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And today we're getting into the 10 laws of favor. Now, favor is amazing. You need favor. Favor is blessings that come without you doing anything. They come from God. Now, what's an interesting thing about favor is, and if you're a new Christian, you may hear some of these things as you go along in your walk. And if you're a seasoned, been a, been a mature believer, been, been, a, been around for a minute, you probably may laugh at some of these things that I may say today. And some of you religious folk, you may just be utterly triggered. And so, ding, 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 trigger warning. But here's, here's really the thing. I remember meeting someone, this was years ago, and I said, well, how are you? Oh, and you hear this cliche, I'm blessed and highly favored. Well, that's what you are, not how you are. There's a difference between how and what, just as much so as there's a difference between he and she and they. He, she is singular. They is plural. So a he or she cannot be a they based upon the very definition of what the words actually mean in the English correct grammar. So when people say, oh, I'm blessed and highly favored, this one particular person, I just, it fell out. I said, no, you're not. Now, I didn't mean, it, it, it just happened. And, and I'm thinking, well, you, I'm blessed and highly favored. No, you're not. You look like your wife just traded you in for a, young, for a richer model. You, you look like you haven't seen your kids since the first Iraq war. And you haven't showered since the War of 1812. You, you, you're not blessed nor highly favored. You, you, you don't know. That's ridiculous that we say this is a cliche. When we don't know what something is, it sounds very great to say and impressive to those that don't know. But those that know just might smile and say, oh, well, isn't that nice? Or, oh, bless their heart, as they say in the South, and you just are like, oh, okay, <laughs> because you learn a few things. So I'm sharing this with you because you may hear people say, oh, I'm blessed and highly favored, yet they don't know what it is because their lives reflect it not. They are not operating in the laws of favor in order to even be saying that, and it's not how they are, it's what they are, which every believer should be blessed and favored. Now, I don't even know what highly favored means versus lowly favored, because now we're getting into a hierarchy of what that even means. Kind of like, and I'm going to call this out just for a quick second, when somebody had the audacity to say the other day, oh, well, I, I have more respect for money than you do. What does that mean? How do we put a label on what the value of it? Well, I respect it more. Well, What's your more and, and what's your definition of how that even works? So when we start to listen to things, and I'm not coming against anyone and saying that, what I'm saying is, is that when we listen to what people say, oh, it's so, it's so highly fake, what's the difference? More so than the others? We're going to get into that. And we have to start listening and paying attention to what we speak. Because what you speak has an impact and it can change, influence, and, and infect if you are not aware. And so here's what I first want to take you to. It's in the book of Psalms. And I'm in a King James today. And some of these things are kind of funny in, in many ways, but things that if you don't know, you don't know. And until you're awake, you're not. You're asleep and not woke and not having a clue as to really what you're saying. Just going along, saying stuff. 
that is not impressive. Now, in the book of Psalms, verse 17, I'm going to demonstrate a few things. The first, the first law is this. You will need more favor next season than you do this one, which also you need more favor this season than you did the previous, especially if you are walking in obedience with the Lord because everything with God is increased. God is not a decreased God. You can go into Genesis and I'll be teaching on the laws of increase because there are laws of de increase as well as laws of decrease. So when God is the God of, of increase, you need favor with each season if you are moving in the things of God. But what happens is many people, instead of getting on the escalator that goes up, they stay on the one that stays stagnant. They just go here and here, and then they don't even know where their destination is, and this is how they're floating through life. They're not going doo -doo 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 -doo, up and increase in expansion. No, they haven't gotten a clue yet. So when you are going up, 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 it's never, it's, it's, Boop, step up. And as you are, you're going to need more favor. Now in Psalm 90, verse 17. And let the beauty of the Lord, our God, be upon us. And establish thou the work of our hands upon ye. The work of our hands establish thou it. Now, if your hands are doing nothing, then you probably have no favor. You're just hanging on by the mercy of God that he hasn't wiped you literally off the face of the earth for your continued disobedience. So we'll set that aside for just a second. This, when we look at this, this is for those that are moving in the obedience of God and that, that we're seeing that these establish the work of our hands. As you begin a work in the Lord and you continue in that work in the Lord, there will be increase. Which means as you increase, you need more favor because there's expansion as well. So you will need more favor next season. So at the end of each spiritual season, which I'm working on a journal for seasons. And, and as, as you move through each season, you need favor. And you need more than you did last I want to say last semester, but last season, then you do this one and you will next. Okay, law number one. Law number two is found in 30. Uh, verse 5 of Proverbs. Now, what this one is, is this. Favor influence, influences, and is influence. Okay, so favor does these two things. Now, I'm going to show you something. Proverbs 30, verse 5. Now, in this... Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in Him. As you begin to put your trust in Him, favor will come with you because it is extra blessings. It is extra for you It through d different displays that I'll cover in just a couple minutes. So within that, favor influences and is influence. So favor is a verb because it's it's active okay it influences and it is a noun it's influence it is a thing favor is influence given by god through your obedience okay so favor is a verb and a noun we have to recognize that it is twofold and that it is influence and it influences. So you have to really protect it, which is which is just something that most people, because they don't know what it is, they don't know how to care for it. Kind of like wisdom. They have no clue the treasure that, that she is and they don't even seek her and then they live ignorant lives. That's not us. <laughs> we, are, we, we don't do that here. No, we are alert and of sober mind. Okay, now that is the second, the second law. Favor influences and is influence. So as you begin to trust in the Lord, he's a shield and you have more bestowed upon you. Which leads me to my next law, which is law number three. You must position yourself for favor. If you don't know what it is, and it's given to you, you will not really receive it. Kind of like if you give a 16-year-old a Lamborghini, and they just barely learned how to drive a stick shift. Probably not the, the uh, best thing to do. Okay, so you have to position yourself 
for favor. How do we do this? In the book of Psalms, we're going to go all the way to Psalms 5. Now, 512. So when you position yourself, and it's only through obedience that favor comes. So I love when people say, oh, favor, favor me, favor me, favor me. You don't even know what you're talking about. I mean, it, it's, it's one of these things that just sounds so cute but it's like it you know what i'm talking about some of you really know what i'm talking about you hear it so often and 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 i live in the land of religion fake the city fake religion filled and outward appearance it is the epitome of that fake 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 i'm i'm so blessed and highly favored and i got my hat on and i look so good today just let me spin around so everybody can get a good look at me because i'm going to church today that's like sit down and do some actual worship here we're here we are here to worship the lord not have a fashion show where everybody just gets to tell you how pretty you look just because you went shopping yesterday for church just to get the attention for it sit down and be about jesus some of this stuff just is like can we just not make everything about self and be about jesus for a minute while we're in church like is that possible can we really do that so I came equipped today. That's right. I came equipped. <laughs> no, nothing going on around here. So, so you have to position yourself for favor. Now, in thirty, in thirty, it is uh, Psalm twelve, five, uh, five twelve. For thou, the Lord, will bless the righteous. It comes from the Lord. With favor will thou compass him, as with a shield. God is the one that bestows favor. It comes through your obedience. If you are not aware of favor and God gives it to you, as I said, you'd be like the kid with the Lamborghini that doesn't know how to drive. You would wreck it. You would not recognize it, which I'll get to that. It would just be a thing that happens that God would get no glory for. Now, in the book of Proverbs chapter 3, okay, we have to really understand that when God blesses us with something, it is not because we are so great. It's because God is a just God who honors his word. But we just make it about us in some way that is like, well, God did this for me because I am so... No, you're not. You are not. You just aren't. And that's the problem that's happening in mainstream Christianity today is that everybody's walking around like God owes them something. We already gave you a son. What more could you possibly think you are entitled to? People talk about the woke, but we need to wake up to who God is. I know so many people that are mocking God right at this very moment that have no fear of God. None. And it's not going to go well for them. It will not go well for them because God is not a God that is mocked. And so when, you, when you're wanting to receive favor, you position yourself because now you know what it is. You know that it's not what you are, it's how you are. You walk in favor, which, how do we know this? Because law two, you're walking in influence. You're walking in influence because favor is influence that you are walking in through your disobedience, moving from season to season. It's quite awesome how God does these things. Now, in three, starting in one of... Proverbs. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add, it, add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shall find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. And you can hold this particular scripture because I'll probably be back to that one. When you are letting, when you're moving in these things, binding these things to the tablet of the heart, when you are forgetting not the laws that Solomon's speaking of, and when you were seeing that you were granted length of days, favor, you will find favor. Now, if you were, if you were in the wrong place, because you're not positioned correctly, you won't find it. And, let, and, and I'm, 
Not always the case, okay? So religious folk, just walk, walk this through with me, okay? That, that when we're moving through this, if you are looking for, let's say you want a wife and you're in the gay bar, you may not find one, although it might be the best place to actually go and look because then she's not haunted by all the other <laughs> creepos. However, she probably would be in a place where there would be more eligible men that she would be wanting to be sought after by. Okay, so, so looking at this, you have to position yourself to receive it. If you're in the wrong place, well, it's not going to be in, it, it, favor will be where it is, which is in obedience in the Lord. So you have to position yourself in this place with the Lord so that everywhere you go, you're walking in it. And it's just so awesome to be able to, to, to piece all of this together because so much of, of, of what God is delivering each and every week by His Holy Spirit, through each of these messages, I'm seeing really the tapestry of, of the Lord well, interwoven within His Word, but within each of these things that He's bringing forth for us to all glean from and seeing these things. And sure, it's one thing when you see these, this is one thing, this is one thing, but when you start to piece it all together, it's just... It's just so beautiful. And so as you're seeing this, okay, I'm positioning myself in the Lord. And, and as a result of my obedience, favor comes with that, which means I have influence all over all the earth and I'm expanding in each season. And as you're doing these things, now you start to see you don't need to have a big platform. You don't need to have TV and radio to be in ministry. But many people believe, well, I'm not in ministry like you are. Well, praise God you're not. Because you don't want to go through this unless God has called you. I certainly would not wish this upon anyone if you want the honest truth about this. That, that, that it requires a different type of strength. And, and if you're not called to it, just be thankful you're called where you are. Okay, so when you're walking in these things, you see, though, that the minute you go out your door, you're in ministry. You don't need to, you don't need to go to the worst remote parts of the world to, to minister to people. You can go right outside your front door. There are people everywhere. I mean, I remember telling, I remember telling my pro team, I said, you know, I know that God has called me to the Muslim nations. We already have radio, radio broadcasting five days a week in, in most, most Muslim countries. People are coming to Christ through our radio program, which is wonderful. I said, but I, I remember the day thinking that I would be traveling to all of these nations, except now they're all coming to America, so I don't have to travel, <laughs> which is probably, well, I'm just going to leave it at that. <laughs> but you all, you all get the idea. And oh, I'm so sorry, I just whacked you in the face. So when we look at when we look at that, it's through obedience. Now I want you to turn with me to Psalm 84 because I'm going to show you something in Psalm 84. Now this is my next law. Okay, Psalm 84, Psalm 84:11. Now favor requires respect. For the Lord is a sun and sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will we withhold, withhold from them that walk upright. Okay, so we recognize and must respect favor. Many people don't really know what it is or that it's happening. When you begin to realize that, that God bestows favor upon his righteous and you begin to walk, it, it's really... The more obedient that you are to the simple things of God, the, the more that these things will be bestowed upon you, the more that you will see it and the more respect that you will have. You know, until you really understand something, most people don't respect it. And what's happening, in, 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 and the Bible even tells us this too, about, about the ways of many, that if they can't understand it, they mock it and they reject it. And I get that happening a lot. I mean, there's people that I minister to that show absolutely no, no respect for me, none. And they don't even hide the fact that they don't. And they don't know what they're losing out on by that disrespect. The same thing with favor. When you disrespect what God has given to you, you will lose it. And God has blessed all of us with many great people to give us wise counsel, but yet many mock it and they deny it, not really recognizing what God has blessed them with. And it's a very dangerous place to walk in because people will be losing out and not know it. Kind of like when the, the pastor that teaches on grace, when he came out saying that grace is a mother and, and so many people mocked him and it was, it, I mean, it was the amount of hatred and diatribe of these things, but yet they just, these people were not scripture read because grace is actually called mother, I think in the book of Romans. So 
with that, when somebody brings something up, kind of like when I shared this, that wisdom is your sister. Well, it's all written. It's just like right there. But for those that don't read it and those that don't understand, they disregard it and then and it shows. And and that's what happens with a lot of people with, with favor is that is that it shows in that way as well. They deny <laughs> they deny that good thing that's been given to them. Yeah, see, you see on camera? Yeah. Say hello. I know, what do you do? It's favor today. So we'll see what happens. So with, with the idea of that, you have to be very, very careful that when favor is given that you respect it, that you treasure it like gold, that you take care of it like wisdom, that you understand it as these things are not just flippant words that are spoken. But that's what's happening so often today. Well, who are you? Well, Dr. Julie Blair, in case you're asking, but is that really important? No, I'm a child of God speaking the Word of God. What I'm speaking is more important than who I am because I'm speaking truth, so I am truth. See, when you, when you operate in that way, you'll have a different respect for what God is blessing you with. And we have to move in that direction to really recognize what God is blessing us with because you'll lose it if you don't. And rightfully so, because why would I continue to give you something? If you disrespect me and you disrespect the council, I'm not going to give you more. You're on your own and you'll have to deal with God for the rebellion that, that, and, the, and the disrespect that has been given to those leaders that God has put to help you. And it's the same thing with all of us. And a lot of times we don't really understand that, that through those leaders comes favor. And when, when, when we cut that off, the favor train is cut off. See, people don't realize, they don't really realize what comes through the leadership that they are under. So recognize that, that when you get favor, it's for a variety of reasons. And as you position yourself in obedience in that direction, and you begin to respect favor when it comes, then you have a higher respect for God because God didn't need to do it. But he did out of his love for you and because he's a just God and he's such an awesome God. So but my, my next uh, law is that it's found in the book of Acts 7. Others will try to ride on the coattails of your favor. Others will try to ride on the coattails of your favor. So you get the people that just want to come around. They do nothing but use. They do, they do nothing but take. They give absolutely nothing. And, and I've experienced this. Um, you got to be really careful. All I can say is you have to be really careful who you allow to go into meetings with you. The names of the people that you interact with, you have to be very careful who you share those names with because there's power. We know power in the name. But we also know that, that, that you have to be very careful. And I'll, I'll give you an example of something very weird. Years ago, I went out with someone and and then I was telling telling a friend no. and then that she just went on Facebook and started looking up this person. No. That's creepy. So I don't say anything about nothing to nobody anymore. Because we have too much access. And favor is access through your obedience to God. You cannot let others come in and siphon it. They will try. They will try. And I remember being in, in meetings and someone very close to me used to sit in in these meetings and then all of a sudden started riding on the coattails and I started seeing a whole lot of things that, that really transformed how I operated in every single way because I learned that I'm never more than two feet away from a rat. And you know what? Garbage collects rats. So you have to remember that. And I'm not trying to be rude or diminish anything. This is to grow you up because there are always people around that will want to ride on, your, on the favor that God has blessed you with. They'll want to hang around you, but they don't want to do what it takes to get their own favor. No, they just want to ladder climb and they'll just climb right over you. Give them the chance. They will surely climb over you because they wouldn't recognize that, it, that what you have is blessing from God. So they would just try to steal the blessing, climb over you and think they're going to get it. They may start something to compete with you out of spite. It's not going to be blessed. Have no worries. Have no worries. God's not going to, that's not going to bless, be blessed. But they will try to run over you and they'll try to siphon the favor that God has given you. So you have to be very, very careful of those trying to write on your favor. Very, very careful. And sometimes you may be going places alone, but it's better because that person trying to, trying to write on the coattails of favor will ruin it for you because of their whatever there is. They will not be the people that you need to be around in certain situations because they would ruin it. 
And, they, and you cannot allow that. So the favor that God has for you is a blessing for you. And you have to be very careful too what testimonies you share from that favor. Because sadly, people are envious, which envy cannot come through wisdom. So the people that are envious have no wisdom. Because if they had wisdom, they wouldn't be envious. And that tells us in scripture. So when you're looking at this, when you start getting really big, awesome testimonies of what God has done, you really need to be careful whom you share them with because the jealous people will start to trample you. And it's just what they do. And it's really sad that that's how it is in the body of Christ. It's like, well, why am I not getting that? I don't know. You can go talk to God for yourself. Maybe you want to look in the mirror and deal with that unforgiveness and that root of bitterness. That bitterness is just taking over your mean self. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> <laughs> but you all get the idea. So the book of Acts uh, chapter 7, and I really hope you're getting something out of this today. This is just uh, starting in 9. I'm going to demonstrate this. And the patriarchs moved with envy, sold Joseph into Egypt, but God was with him. And delivered him out of all of his afflictions and gave him favor and wisdom in the sight of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. And he made him governor over Egypt and all his house. God blessed Joseph with favor. God knew Joseph's obedience when nobody believed him. See, your obedience is on display. And it's private. God knows. And, and when you, those of you that are called into ministry, there is no room for compromise because there's always that one person that is waiting to destroy you. There's always one. And they operate, they might smile to your face, but you better sleep with your one eye open because they are waiting for that moment. But God knows. See, God knows. And so within this, God delivered him out of his afflictions. God delivered Joseph and gave him favor and wisdom in the sight of Pharaoh. So not only did God give, and this is, this, is, this is leading me to another point that I've got written down, but that may just change a couple around here. But God gave Joseph favor. with So Joseph had favor with him that led to favor with man. Okay, so you can write this one down. I'm going to skip ahead here, but that's okay. Write this down as law number six. Favor with God leads to favor with man. Okay, and we can use the same scripture, so you can write this here, Acts, Acts 7, 9 to 10. Many people try to manipulate man and call it favor. And then say, this is from God. No, it's not. You're walking a witchcraft. Let's just be clear about what it is. You manipulated, you lied. Now you're trying to say it's God. God does not need to manipulate. God does not lie. And I will testify to this because when I moved to the state of Texas, the Republic, I only had a $200 gift card to Target. And when I tried to rent this apartment that I had already done everything online, they would not give me the keys until I showed proof of employment. I didn't have any employment. I had a $200 gift card to Target. Now, in my worldly days, I would have dialed up all my IT friends, said, listen, I need you to create this document that says I came from this place and that I make X amount a year and I need you to fax it to these people. And they would have done it. However, that's witchcraft. It's disobedience. It's not of God. And if I'm going to go do what God has called me to do, I need to do it when no one is looking. I need to do it and trust God. Because all that nonsense that Christians are trying to operate it, let me get this and let me go get this and let me manipulate the system to get this, to get that. Let me con job these people for this, this, and then want to claim it, God, you're a liar and you need to sit down because it is not of God. God does not work that way. You don't need to lie to get something when God is the God that will give it. And so your favor, what happened this whole night, I went to one of these crack shack places. I did not know that that's what it was. It was like a crack hotel. Seemed to stay in a lot of them walking in this journey with the Lord. I mean, it was just, I don't know what happened, but it was a cheap hotel and all I needed to do was pray in tongues. So I prayed in tongues the whole night and guess what? I showed up. They never asked me for the proof of employment, nor did they want the extra $200 deposit because I was out of state. I didn't do anything but trust God.
favor comes in your obedience and in your faith in the Lord. As you get favor with God through obedience, as, as Joseph did, God will reward that with favor for, for, for Joseph with Pharaoh. Had Joseph not been obedient in private, where nobody could see, because many people like to put it all on display, it's like just, it's hogwash. So this is why you're going to see many things with many leaders as leaders are falling because of disobedience. What happens behind the scenes will be displayed in some way in the forefront. This is why it's why why did Jesus had 30 years of training. People now want two minutes and think that they're ready. No, you just you're just a fame whore. Let's just call it what it is. We need to sit down. It's not about you, it's about Christ. So when we're and it feels like I'm just a little bit mouthy today, but it needs to be apparently said. So praise God that we're walking in this way to be no nonsense because we've covered up a lot of stuff. You know, it's kind of like we don't Let's just get it all out and talk about it and be real. And, and when you are obedient, guess what will happen? The favor will come from God and then it comes to man. So you don't need to go to man to try to get something and then praise God. No, you need to praise God, get right with God, and the favor will flow. You will be in the ever flow of favor all the days of your life walking in obedience because that's how God flows. So it becomes very simple. We just have to live in the simplicity of what God's word is without trying to extrapolate what we think we know what God means. Now, God's word is pretty clear. Obey. Pretty clear. Done. Right? We don't need to, well, what is the word is? No, you're just trying to deny that, that you're a cheater. That's all you're trying to do. We don't even need to play that game. We already know. Okay, so then it's then you now you're under strong delusion, being taught by doctrines of demons, deceiving yourself, trying to play it off like you're so super holy. No, you're not even holy. Give me a break. You're not even holy, and you're not even a super sister Christian or a super brother Christian or a super anything. You're just a making a mockery of God. So when when you look at the the bottom line foundation of this, it's so simple. Your obedience is on display outward by what you do in private. Period. So Joseph denied, we know the story of Joseph, you can go back and read it, but we know that Joseph denied Potiphar's wife, and as he denied her, that was in private. Yes, it was on display, but the decision that he made was in private. God blessed him with favor, and the favor gave him, the favor, if you go back to what law two was, favor is influence, and it influences. Joseph had both, by his obedience to God, and he sought God first and not man, which that's my point that that when you see this, that favor with God leads to obe leads to favor with men. Now I want you. Yeah, I gotta find where this stuff is first. Um, it is First Samuel. We're gonna get there. First Samuel two. And as I'm going through this, I'm just thinking about Samson and Delilah. Gosh. She just pulled a number one number on him. First Samuel 2, 26. First Samuel 2, 26. And the child Samuel grew on and was in favor both with the Lord and also with men. Notice though that it's God first. Okay, it's the Lord first. Your favor comes from God. So you don't have to try and be so cunning. Like you gotta get that out because it's not of God. Excuse me. And and it's becoming more prevalent in and, and when you can't tell a Christian from a non-Christian, there's a problem. When you walk in favor, things happen for you that could only be by God. Like when I shared the testimony, maybe I did, but I think that I did in one of my messages about how my mechanic gave me $1,000 worth of free labor, and he's Muslim. That's not the first time I've had favor with, with my car mechanics. Another time, I just learned about favor and prayed for it, wanted to get something done in my vehicle. And I said, listen, uh, I got 600 bucks. That's, that's all I have. And if you can get everything done in that, they did it. But then here's what they ended up finding out was that it needed a whole lot of other things. And then they forgot to charge me for 
something that was $89. Not a rotation, it's something I don't even know. But the free labor amount was $1,189. The free and all of what I didn't pay. Favor. I didn't need to do anything. I didn't bat my eyes. I didn't need to sexualize like a lot of women do. That's not, that's not godly. We don't need to do that. We don't need to do that. We change an atmosphere by whose presence is with us. You don't need to manipulate to, to do those things the worldly way. Favor comes with who you are in Christ, not who you are in the world. That's not favor, that's manipulation, and it's unacceptable as a, as, as a child of God. So that was, that was law number six. Now, <clears throat> let me just give you this one here. Number, this will be number seven. Favor without wisdom is flavorless. Now, you're really not going to have favor, favor without wisdom is flavorless. Or you could just write non-existent. If you don't have wisdom, you're not going to have favor because you would not be coming to Christ. <laughs> we, we're going deep on this one. Let me just explain this, okay? So uh, those without Christ don't have favor from God. Now, they might have uncommon grace and common grace on their way to their saving grace, but favor is different. Favor is for the righteous. And if you're not righteous, there's no favor for you. There's only certain things that you get in certain types of relationships. And I already shared with you about, about the levels of, of gifts that I would give to somebody. And I got a whole storehouse of, of gifts for, for that, that, that blessed, highly favored man. <laughs> oh, I just had to say it because you see how kind of funny it just sounds. Oh, it's just so funny. But here's my point. Is, is this, without wisdom, you're not getting favor. You just won't. Because wisdom is the beginning of the fear of the Lord, and the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom that leads you to, to come to Christ. So without wisdom, you're not coming to the Lord, which means you get no favor. So this may not apply to you if you're already a believer, but let me just pause here. And this is very, very serious. If you were listening to this and you got this far, because you're kind of like, I don't know if she's crazy or not. I kind of like her. She's a little quirky, but you know what? I got I to gotta watch and see. Let me tell you something. If you've not yet given your life to Christ, now is your moment. This is your now time. You are watching this message because there's something that you know that you need. Something that you've been seeking that you cannot get within. You cannot get out of where you are without Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. You cannot. You need Him. And the only way you will get from this point to living your life in the full is with Him. And so if you want to live an abundant life, if you want to live a life filled with peace and eternity, you need to give your life to Jesus. You don't need to think about it because you'll think yourself out. You need to do it right now. So what I want you to do is I want you at this very moment, if this you're so willing and you desire something greater, is to just ask Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, to rule your life, to govern your life. And as you ask him for that, you just tell him that you can't do it alone. He already knows this, but you need to really recognize and surrender to him that, Lord, I made a mess of my life and I'm so sorry and I just... I repent for what I've done. I don't even know what I've done, and I don't even know what repent means, but God, if you're there, Jesus, I need you. And that's where I was. Heck, I got saved, and then, well, it took me a few years. Thank God that, that, that I wasn't judged by others around me for how long it took. And so I know from experience that I wouldn't be here today if it weren't for him because he literally saved my life. Literally saved my life in the emergency room. He saved my life. And so that may be where you are. You're looking at, you're looking right now, you need a miracle. Your family's in, in the hospital. You don't know if they're going to make it. You don't know how your children are going to, how your children are going to get through. One decided in college to get two jabs and is now facing, facing something that was never told. 
and you need a miracle and you need one now, that comes through God, that comes through Jesus. Whatever you're going through, I believe that he is capable of bringing forth those miracles. And so when you're ready to receive that, you just hit pause on this message. You can always come back to the message and he'll bring, he'll bring you back. <laughs> but you need Jesus. And now is your time. And if that's you and if you've done that, of course, you know, if, you, if we were all live, then you would be standing up, coming down to the altar. I would pray with you, lay hands on you. But, and I don't care about social distancing because I'm healed and will remain healed forever in the name of Jesus. So I, it's okay for me. I operate in a different way, but I want you to know that you're loved and that Jesus loves you and he's been waiting for you. And if that was you, please share. Please let me know because your eternity is that important. And what comes with, with you choosing eternity is favor that you've never experienced before. And so there are times in a message, I don't need to wait till the end of a, of a message to have an altar call. I do it when the Spirit leads, the Spirit led people coming to Jesus, and we're going to continue to praise the Lord. Hallelujah, that more souls are being won for Christ, because you know what? This is our now time. Hallelujah. And so without wisdom, you will, not, you will get no favor, and that's not a place you want to be living in. Now, point number eight is that the amount of favor that you have is on display and when you recognize it it will be it will be that you have something so beautiful with you already have wisdom with you and she rocks let me just tell you and and so when you see that it's on display the level of favor that you have is on display you'll walk in a different way you won't be walking on oh woe is me if only I was a a quadrillionaire my life would be but no wouldn't you just have other problems you complain about let's just be clear if you're complaining now when you don't have you're gonna complain when you do have because you're gonna have more to complain about I mean complainers don't stop just because they paychecks different they find always have something new to complain about how do we know this because most people don't want don't want a job promotion they want an increase in money but then even then they still complain about their circumstances because they didn't respect money enough to value what they had when they had it so then they get more, and if you don't respect the little that you have, you surely will not respect the more that God will bless you with through promotion. So with that said, it's on display. In Psalm 106, verse 4, Remember me, O Lord, with the favor that thou bearest unto thy people. Oh, visit me with thy salvation. And then he continues on. Remember me, O Lord, with the favor that bears unto thy people. Remember me, Lord, with the favor that you give to your people. God is always giving and bestowing favor. Are you going to be one of those recipients? You get to decide. When I look at Job... Job went through so much, but even within that, look at what God blessed him with at the end, more than what he had before. A lot more. We sometimes get caught up in looking at our circumstances instead of looking at our God. When you lose yourself of your circumstances and can recognize that you can be anywhere and walk in favor, that you'll live a different way. You know, I remember when I first met my mom and I started asking her about what the first night was. She was homeless. And, and I've encountered this with a lot of homeless that I used to be on, the, on this board in, in, in Denver with the, with the homeless. And we did a lot of outreach in dealing with the homelessness problem. And it's increasing across America. And many, you don't need to go that far to see it. But I remember asking my mom when I met her about her homeless experience because she'd been homeless for quite some time. And I wanted to know what that first night was like, because I think that as a woman, I might, I might be a little bit fearful. But I wanted to know what she thought. And she said, it was so peaceful. She said, I can see the stars. You just walk outside, you just walk outside your backyard and look up and see the stars. You don't need to be homeless to go look at some stars. Let me just be, let me just say that. But it, I thought it was quite fascinating. 
that that was what what it was that that's that it was just a different type of level of of peace to see that to see the beauty of God in such a state that her position her her focus was was yeah this is a situation I'm in but I could focus on my circumstances and then relish with the enemy and celebrate it with him because that's what will get you to do it's called pity or I can just thank God that this is not where I'm going to live. I'm just passing through. Thank God I'm just passing through. We're all just passing through, but you get the idea. So as you look up and move away from your circumstances and the fullness of God, your circumstances will be fleeting. Now, when we move to law number nine, you have to ask for it. You don't have favor. Well, favor will come. Okay, but most people don't ask what they're not aware of. Okay, so... Um, think about that. Do you ask for things you don't know you need to ask for? Probably not, right? You wouldn't know to ask. <laughs> so we need, a, we need wisdom. So I just ask for everything. I, I remember the days, Lord, I need everything. I'm asking you for everything and everything is inclusive of what you know I need and what I don't know that I need and probably some things that I want that I don't know that I want. And I thank you for whatever it is that you believe that I would be able and in position to receive. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> I used to pray that because I didn't know what I needed. And I didn't know, then, and this was years ago, like 2002-ish. And then I remember being told, well, you need to pray every day. Strength and energy to get through the day and the night. Then I realized, yes, we pray for strength and energy to get through the day and the night because the day is different than the night. And if I pray for it for the day, then I won't have any at night. And that's not wise. Then I started praying for wisdom for the day because I need wisdom. I need wisdom in how to run a ministry. I need wisdom in how to consult and wisdom in counsel. I need wisdom in, in how to deal with, with the tyrannical operations within the universities that I teach for that are coming against us about this pronoun situation. And, and Lord, I need wisdom in, in the finances that you're blessing this ministry with and wisdom in understanding where exactly the land is that we're purchasing to build this training center that, you, that, or, that you're building. Wisdom, I mean, with, there's so much. There's never, never nothing that I don't need wisdom for. So I started learning how to pray for wisdom. Then it was favor. Well, I need favor with the court. I need favor here, 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 and here. And I need, first, I need it with you. So show me how I get it with you. And that's where, that's where if you don't ask, and you probably wouldn't have a recognition that it's coming from God, and then you'd be so pumped up in your own self thinking you're so great when Jesus already said none are good. <laughs> so, okay, well, I'll just sit down. But you get the idea. Now, Here's another thing I'm going to show you. Esther. Turn with me to the book of Esther. I've got to find Esther. Chapter 2. This is my, my ninth point. You all have your numbers down. I'm kind of skipped around here. It should be, I think this might actually be point 10. Esther 2, starting in 8. So it came to pass when the king's commandment and his decree was heard, and when he, many maidens were gathered together unto Shunshane, the palace, Shushan, the palace, to the custody of Haggai, that Esther was brought also unto the king's house, to the custody of Haggai, keeper of the women. And the maiden pleased him, and she obtained kindness of him, and he speedily gave her such things for purification, with such things as belonged to her. She found favor. Now, God knows the amount of favor that you need for where you're going. So we're coming full circle that you need more favor this season than you did last. But for every season, God knows the amount. But many people want to want to just, Lord, I need the amount of favor that you know that I need. God knows. You don't want to think too highly of yourself or too lowly and then be in a place where you've diminished yourself because you didn't get all of what it was that you needed. God knows. So favor will come at the amount that God knows you need. So God knows the amount of favor that you need. If only Jezebel got right with God, she probably would have ended up in a whole, whole different position. But she rejected God and anything that came with him. So God knows the amount of favor that you need. So those are the 10 laws of 
favor, okay? And I know that I gave them to you out of order uh, five and six, but that's okay. I have a bonus for you, and that is this, and this is a great one. Proverbs 18, 22. Favor comes with wives. Whoso with whoso findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtain favor of the Lord. Well, how about that? So whoever finds a wife finds a good thing, so that wives are a good thing. We have to recognize that wives are a good thing. So you are a good thing, great thing, and wives are a good thing, and with that wife, you also get favor. So you gotta cherish that, because check this out. <laughs> now we're gonna go somewhere, but just walk this out with me. If, you were just, if you're head of the household and you are disobedient, just doing any disrespect to your wife, oh, it won't go well for you, because here's the thing. He who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. A wife of noble character. Don't forget that. So ladies, you've got to be bringing that noble character. But he who, he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. If you're the head of the household and you've got a wife, you've got a good thing. And through her, you find favor. When you are disobedient, you will lose the favor. And probably not only lose it with your, with your God, you will lose it with your wife. And you may also lose your wife too. So uh, how about that? Let me explain that again. Okay, because this is something that we need to really understand. He who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. So women, you need to be positioned to be found by that man with your noble character because he, no, he don't want no wackadoo, as some say. He does not want crazy. So you got to clean yourself up to be in position to be found. So that's between you and the Lord. He who finds a wife finds a good thing. So the wife is a good thing and through her you get favor. Okay, so you would need to be already hearing from the Lord about where to go to find this wife. So you're already in it with the Lord, knowing where to go. If you already got a wife, you don't need another one. You don't need to play David and be go into these other religions, so on and so forth. You already have a husband, you already have a wife, you need to stop looking because nobody's available for you. We're just set that clear so that pastor's not your husband and, and just leave it at that. So with with that, you, you got the wife, you got the good thing, and you're obtaining favor which you already had it to get the good wife in the first place. But if you do not recognize the favor and that she came with favor or favor came with her and you disrespect and you dishonor God, you not only lose the favor with God, but you lose the favor with your wife and you may lose your wife. It happens all the time. So you have to really recognize that. That's your bonus. And I could, can't, I could spend hours on that alone because there's so much packed in that. So the way that women are treated will, will, have, a, will have a big say. So if you, if you are head of a household disrespecting your wife in any way, you need to repent, and because she is a good thing, and that favor is coming with her, and you, do not have, you are in no position to be losing the favor that you had with God and with her, because coming back to my other point, you first seek God, and favor comes from God, and then he makes it to where you have it with man. What was it? 1 Samuel 2, 2.26. 1 Samuel 2.26. So we recognize the favor first comes with, from God. So you get it with God to get the bride, marry the bride, she's your wife, she's a good thing, and you, the favor cycle continues. Mess up any respect to that woman and you will mess it all up. And ladies, you as well, it can't just be that he does everything, but we'll set that aside because we're just focusing on what this scripture says. Wait till we get to submission and everyone else just has a meltdown. But we'll save that trigger message for another time. Well, we can only handle so much today in one day. <laughs> So I pray that this has blessed you. That's your bonus. So as you are moving forward in favor, you see it. And as you see it, you're going to relish it. It's just going to be blanketing your life in every single way. And I know that you're just going to walk in a whole new way. And to God be the glory for that. So let's close out. Father, I thank you for favor. I pray, Father, that this message is favor to all who hear, to all who receive. May they be blessed as they come in. 
blessed as they go out. May they have their eyes open to receiving and seeing favor in an entirely new way. May you bless them with favor. May you bless the singles that are, that are seeking spouses. Father, we thank you for bringing marriages together today. We thank you for the favor. We thank you for the noble character of the women. And we thank you that men are doing their part. We thank you, Father, for, for the gender roles that you've established. And through how we operate, the favor comes. So we thank you that, that we can ask Holy Spirit to expose all areas of sin that would be in our life causing us to not walk in favor. We rebuke the sin. We only come to serve you. and We thank you that favor will be bestowed upon us as we all go forth. We thank you, Father, that we are your beloved today and always. We praise you, Father. We thank you for these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And wow. Oh, I'm so excited. This was just fantastic. We are taking over the earth in favor, and God is so good. And so every day we pray. I mean, when I say every day, Every day we pray at 12 o'clock Central Standard Time, 214-586-0411. The number's always posted. You can go to julieblur.com for all the country codes. I may need to start putting the country codes in the description, but there's, still, there's 127 countries. So YouTube may not, and all the social media, they may not like that, but that's okay. Who cares what they like? I'll try it and see what happens. Uh, also, Thursday nights is a kingdom advancement call. That is a full mentorship. We're in, we're in a season of, of, of God's kingdom and what it is, how we operate the seven pillars of, of kingdom, what our authority is, how we take dominion and walking in it, what our purpose is. There's so much within that. So I invite you to join us. It's every Thursday night, 7 o'clock Central Standard Time. And at julieblairministries.org, there's a lot of new things. Now, I kind of messed up the, I don't know what the website looks like, to be honest with you. Um, I thought I was doing a good thing with one thing and then I mess it all up and I don't know what they've I don't know if they fixed it so if it looks a mess pray <laughs> just just pray for me please just keep me lifted up and pray and pray keep our ministry lifted up from prayer there's a lot of warfare if God puts it on your heart to be to to be a a giver to this ministry be obedient that's all I'm gonna say we have a lot of things that we need oh and one more thing I am gonna say I need seeds I'm not gonna ask you to sow a seed I'm gonna ask you to send seeds what does this mean? Well, for Dove Park, which is where our tra which is our training center, we're building a park, and we need seeds, like seeds, carrot seeds, pumpkin seeds, watermelon seeds, petunia seeds. We need seeds. So if you have seeds or can get any seeds in our address for the ministries in the description below, if you will send any kind of seed, I don't care what part of the world you're in, send us seeds because we will plant those seeds. And I've got, I've, God has given me favor and access to a master gardener that I can ask all kinds of questions. And what I want to do at Dove Park is for whoever sows the seeds, I want to put where, where, what type of seed, there'll be the little placard in the ground at that area but then you who who sowed that so you would be sowing literal seed into the ministry into the ground to produce a real harvest when you can you can you can do all the other stuff that all the other preachers will tell you with regards to sowing a seed and seed is money and da -da. no I want the seeds I want the actual seeds and yes we do need funds as well for many projects that that are needing to be to, to be done our website still is is in shambles it does need to not shambles but it's not fixed it's not finished and and you know what it everything is a process that takes time and costs money it's just the way it is there's I need to hire people and I need to be able to do that and so in order to expand and grow it just is what it is so if you have gifts and talents that that you would like to use for this ministry then you can also share that or go to julieblairministries.org and put that in the just contact us if you if you have any gifts and talents and you want to volunteer or you are looking for an internship I can also do that I've had many interns um, in some of my businesses and make sure that you get the college credit so on and so forth so if that is you hey you know what we're, we're all coming together in unity to advance God's kingdom it's about his kingdom and taking territory from the enemy and that's what we're doing so I need seeds God tells you to give you give be obedient thank you for the seeds that's gonna that is just I'm so excited about that 
and then go to julieboyministries.org and there's a lot of other messages and blog posts and if you are struggling with the with the whether or not to get to to you know have them stab you um you can go to julie blood ministries click on uh, media blogs and there's a blog that is should you or should you not it covers pregnant women it covers the rna the dna the molecular level within the blood it, it covers the immune system it covers everything that you could ever begin to think or imagine it took three weeks of prayer to put that prayer together so i encourage you to go there and get that you can copy it share it with your friends and make certain that you that you are prayed up in in that decision and so i pray you're mightily blessed today <laughs> mightily what does that even mean right you see what see where i'm going so i pray you're blessed as you go in and go out thank you so much for being here and i will be back with the next message god bless you all have a great day bye